As we stand on the brink of a new era, quantum computing and cyber security are at the forefront of delivering commercial value and revolutionising numerous fields. And today's guest is Duncan Jones. He's from a company called Quantinium, and he has over 15 years' experience in cybersecurity, cryptography, and he's going to shed a little light today on how quantum computing can both pose challenges to current encryption methods, but also offer groundbreaking solutions for enhanced security. From quantum key distribution to quantum random number generation, I want to explore the positive applications of quantum computing in cybersecurity, backed up by real-world examples and partnership giants, but in a language that we can all understand, because I know when a few of you hear quantum computing and cryptography, you suddenly hear Doc Brown from Back to the Future shouting, Great Scott! (laughs) But don't worry, we're not going to leave anybody behind today. We're going to put it all in a language everyone can understand and learn more about how Quantinium's focus is on advancing hardware but also achieving computation milestones over the next decade. And this episode promises to be a glimpse into the future of technology, but also show you that a lot of this stuff we're going to be talking about is not science fiction. It's available right here, right now. But before we get today's guest on, it's time for a quick shout out to the sponsors of Tech Talks Daily. And in today's digital age, where data breaches are all too common, securing sensitive information has never been more critical, right? Well, enter Kiteworks, a pinnacle of managed file transfer security, or MFT security. So, with its FedRAMP moderate authorization, a prestigious certification that they've held since 2017 by the Department of Defense, Kiteworks stands as a bastion of security in a sea of uncertainty. So, step into the future of secure file transfer with Kiteworks by visiting kiteworks.com today to see why it's hailed as the most secure MFT on the market. So once again, kiteworks.com. And now, let's get today's guest on. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Cambridge here in the UK, where Duncan is waiting to take us into the quantum realm and discover the potential of quantum cybersecurity and much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Hi there. Thank you for having me, Neil. Uh, My name is Duncan Jones, and I oversee all of the cybersecurity activities at Continuum, which is mostly focused around how do we use quantum as a a force for good in cybersecurity. I'm actually new to the world of quantum in the last three or four years. Uh, My background is in regular cybersecurity, I guess you would call it. Um, So I've spent my career 15 or 16 years working for uh, generally global cybersecurity companies, working on cryptographic solutions, that sort of thing, working with companies like Talis or in the IoT space with Arm and uh, actually briefly some uh, payments uh, with WorldPay. So a bit of a varied, uh, varied background. Wow, incredibly exciting space to be in at the moment. And Quantinium is known as the largest full-stack quantum computing company. And your CEO and co-founder shared the inspirational story or origin story behind the company and being inspired by Stephen Hawking on this show. But for anyone that's not heard that conversation, can you just remind the listeners with a little more about essentially the kind of problems and business value that you offer at uh, Quantinium and uh, with your technology? Yeah, sure. So there's a there's a very nice photo of uh, Stephen in our in our boardroom uh, with with Ilias. Uh, and yeah, the for anyone who missed the backstory, the the extremely brief version of it is that uh, Ilias and uh, Stephen Hawking knew them knew each other very well. And there was a moment back in the early uh, 2010 sort of time frame where uh, Stephen basically. You know, gave Ilias the nod and said, "You know, this is a real thing. This is going to go somewhere." And uh, Ilias prompt, promptly went off and started a company. And uh, fast forward ten years, and it's now the uh, largest quantum computing company in the world. We just had a significant fundraise at the start of the year that values us at around five billion dollars or something ludicrously large. So it's a really exciting place to be at the moment. Um. We, we describe ourselves as, as a full-stack quantum computing company. And, and what that means is that we have teams working on 
sort of every uh, every layer and every area where quantum computing is going to have some advantage. So that means from from the sort of hardware layer and the physics layer, we have people developing you know, world class quantum computers themselves. So, for example, in the United States, we have uh, you know a pair of machines based around a technology called trapped ions, which is just one of the approaches that you can take when you're building quantum computers. But it's a very promising uh, direction to travel in. And, and what it's resulted in is a, a pair of machines that are demonstrating some really world-class performance at the moment. Um, above that, you, you're much like with a traditional computer, you've got things like you know operating systems and software applications, and you have similar... Uh, uh, similar items in the quantum world as well. So we've got groups focused on, you know, the the emergence of operating systems and sort of very very advanced compilers for quantum circuits. And then on top of that is where the rubber meets the road, and that's the um, application use cases. So we've got groups focused on uh, quantum chemistry and quantum machine learning. And language processing, and obviously we'll, we'll come back to cyber, which is the part I lead. But we're addressing, you know, real world challenges. So some of our projects at the moment focus on things like uh, seismic imaging. So there's things you can do in in with with quantum technology that can potentially reduce uh, the amount of memory you need or make it faster to perform these calculations. We're doing things in, you know. Very exotic sounding stuff like computational fluid dynamics, which is all about, you know, how do you understand how air and liquids move past things? So that's really helpful for simulating uh, for some of our customers. Um, and then another example maybe would be in the finance sector. So, you know, Monte Carlo simulation is a very important topic for a lot of organizations that need to um, sort of do things like portfolio analysis and and quantum promises uh speed ups there that might allow you know real shifts in time uh towards things like real time analysis rather than you know having to take overnight position which is sort of how things are done today so there's there's this whole kind of spectrum of use cases there are different uh degrees of maturity and uh and in each of those areas, I think we've managed to assemble a critical mass of world experts who are really pushing that forwards. Fantastic. And I will add a link to that conversation that we had with your founder. I think it was episode 1949, just under two years ago. I'll add a link to the show notes so people can learn more about that inspirational backstory. And, and more recently, I was reading that quantum computing could generate novel answers to some of the biggest challenges that we face in a variety of industries including cybersecurity, and just looking at the number of breaches in January and February this year already, it is a huge topic. So what is quantum cybersecurity? Sounds in- incredibly intriguing. Yes, it's a quite a broad field, actually. Um, and you're right, if we look at the kind of landscape we live in, cyber threats and cyber risks are sadly always moving in the wrong direction. So um, you know, people are always looking out for opportunities to take a step forward on the defensive side as well. Um, and so w- when you consider quantum cybersecurity, there's, there's two sides to that um, field. So so one side is focused on actually viewing quantum as a, as a negative thing. So as you know, we are, we're incredibly excited about what quantum computers can do in a number of fields. It's going to really revolutionize humanity's you know, progress, really. But the problem is quantum computers can solve problems that we can't solve today. And actually, we rely upon that to keep some of our cybersecurity systems safe and secure. So as these quantum computers become more powerful, there is the potential for them to be misused to break into cryptographic systems. And there is a particular uh, quantum algorithm that was um, identified, you know, more than uh, 20 years ago uh, called Shaw's algorithm uh, which would allow us to effectively break the mathematics used in a lot of uh, cryptographic systems today so one half of quantum cybersecurity is focused on tackling that problem uh, and it's a huge piece of work to migrate 
uh, organizations and their IT infrastructure to start using different types of cryptography. And these new types that are being developed are hoped and believed to be resistant to being broken on a quantum computer as well as on a on a classical computer. So, so that that side is very interesting. It's getting a lot of press at the moment. You know, we've seen the U.S. government, in particular, uh, taking a lead there and really driving and demanding organizations to take that threat seriously and to begin to, um, you know, uh, respond to that. Uh, but actually, that's the side that I I think is interesting, but it's not quite as exciting as the idea of using quantum as a positive force in in cybersecurity. And the reason why we can do that is because you know if you if you sort of explore it at any depth um, quantum computing and quantum physics, um, it becomes clear very quickly that it's it's very different to what we're familiar with, you know, with the physics that most of us just about caught wind of at school. You know, we, we, we're well beyond the kind of Newtonian kind of uh, apples falling out of tree stuff. We're into the weird and wacky world of quantum. And some of the behaviors that you can witness and you can measure at a quantum level are really, really interesting for cybersecurity. And they provide opportunities for us to take parts of our cybersecurity infrastructure and make them stronger. So actually reduce the likelihood that somebody can break this particular piece. So f- for example, um, one area that my my team focuses on here is in uh, the generation of random data. Uh, so, so randomness is a, is a really important uh, topic in cryptography in general. Uh, you, you can't really encrypt data securely or 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 do any kind of cryptography without a, a strong supply of randomness uh, and that's just one example of how quantum behavior and quantum systems can help us achieve stronger cybersecurity because the guarantees that you get from quantum physics are are far stronger than you can get from classical physics so we're able to generate stronger encryption keys for example using a quantum computer than we can with a with a classical computer and you provided one fantastic example there of how they, you can use cyber security as a positive around quantum computing and for any business leaders or anybody in the cyber security industry listening wondering how this might work in their world are there any other use cases that you could share that would just help them understand how it would work in their world too yeah i can give you a couple of examples um because yeah, on the one hand, this stuff can sound pretty like you know science fiction and and uh, unattainable, and, and in fact, the the opposite is true. Uh, some some of this technology is, is in production today, uh, and then some other uh, solutions are, are coming down the path. So, if I if I just expand a bit on what I t- started with, which is this topic of of uh, randomness generation. So this is something that. Yeah, sounds very far fetched. We're going to tap into quantum physics and generate <laughs> random data, uh, but actually, it's 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 entirely possible today. And we're working with customers who've embedded this technology into their you know IT infrastructure. And in many cases, we actually work with cybersecurity vendors who add that into their products. Um, and the reason why we're able to do this today is because uh, we have quantum computers; they exist. Uh, and although they are not yet at a stage where they can solve, you know, some of the complex problems we want to tackle in, uh, in you know, chemistry or or material modeling, all of these sorts of exotic things, but for the task of generating randomness that we can prove is actually really random, um, we already have all the capacity that we need. They're already powerful enough for that use case. So that that is something that is actually deployed today. We have a, a product called Quantum Origin that was designed specifically for this, uh, and so we can embed our technology into you know even the laptop you're using right now to speak to me. We we could put our software in into your laptop. It contains some data that we've generated on a real quantum computer, and the net result is that your your laptop generates stronger encryption keys and it's and it's it's you know it reduces the risk of sophisticated attacks so that's something that's available in the here and now 
if we look slightly further down the line, um, there's there's another technology that's that's getting a lot of interest, which is called quantum key distribution. So this tackles a sort of a, a related problem. So okay, you know, maybe maybe Neil, with your kind of uh, you know super advanced quantum origin technology inside your laptop, you're now generating the best keys in the world. But often you have to share a key with somebody. You know, if you want to actually communicate securely with some somebody, they have to have the same key as you. It's a bit like uh, you know locking a box and sending it to somebody. They can't open the box unless they have the key. Mm. So there are some uh, traditional approaches to solving this using you know typical classical technologies, but quantum provides some more interesting ingredients here that might make the solution even stronger. So we can actually exchange quantum information with each other, so qubits rather than digital bits. And one of the properties of quantum physics is you can prove that nobody else has. Uh, basically listened into your conversation. So if, if you and I successfully share a key using this this quantum key distribution, we can actually prove to ourselves with the laws of physics that that nobody else knows that key. It's just me and you. And that's a, just a, that's a really interesting property, and it could promise stronger communications going forward. That one, though, as a technology, it's a little bit less mature, and so we're seeing lots of examples of people deploying this at, at small scales, but for it to become production ready and 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 deployed at scale, like the like the first use case, uh, a little bit more time needs to pass. We have some technical challenges to to overcome. Uh, but I don't doubt that we will get there. So I think uh, quantum key distribution will be a important part of communication security in the years ahead. Incredibly cool. And I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to share with me, but I'm going to try anyway, because you probably locked down as to what you can share but are you able to discuss any collaborations or partnerships that you are exploring right now any or if you can't any teasers or that you couldn't uh, leave us with yeah there are a few we can mention um one of the challenges i think you're alluding to in the cyber security space is that when you work with people sometimes they are proud to talk about it and sometimes they want to keep it secret because yeah. everything they do is about secrecy but yeah there's a few examples that might help people kind of uh make this less abstract. So, for example, one use case we have is we're working with uh, Honeywell, um, which, you know, we're, we're both from the UK. And, and for some reason in the UK, when you say Honeywell, people just think of thermostats and radiators. Yeah. Um, but if it, globally, Honeywell is a huge organization that does everything from, you know, aviation systems to critical infrastructure. So uh, in that uh, arena, uh, critical infrastructure, we we have a, a use case with Honeywell. So they've deployed this quantum origin technology into their smart meter infrastructure. And so if you sort of think about where where the greatest risks lie for, you know, nation state attacks or, you know, we we've kind of seen with the you know the sad situation in, in Ukraine that cyber warfare is a real it's a real part of modern warfare, and and um, you know, critical infrastructure uh, gets its name because you know, clearly, if you can in, in interfere with the, for example, the electricity grid, you can really uh, cause a lot of problems. So it's an area where security is is critical, and so Honeywell, in, in this case, has deployed Quantum Origin into their uh, into their infrastructure to strengthen the cryptography, strengthen the keys that are being generated there. On a sort of related note, we want another one of our partners is. Um, an organization called uh, Talis. They are a uh, uh, well, they're a global organization headquartered in in France. Um, and again, they do everything from uh, you know battleships down to um, you know IoT devices. But they have a a, a cybersecurity division, and they're one of the leaders for uh, enterprise uh, cybersecurity. And so, uh, last month we actually launched a initiative with Talis, which we are calling the uh, the PQC starter kit. So here, PQC referring to post quantum cryptography, which is the uh, which is the the name given to these new algorithms that will resist quantum attack. And so, actually, we're we're sort of merging together there the two sides of the industry that I was talking about earlier. So you know, that's a that's a technical offering that 
allows organizations to start exploring what it means to become ready to face the quantum threat and at the same time embracing quantum as part of the solution uh, so you kind of get the best of both worlds there uh, and, and maybe one more example because i don't know you probably don't want uh, 20 of them but uh, just to give you a, a sense of the range of things that we we encounter um we had a pretty cool project recently with a partner in japan uh called eagles uh and and the problem being solved there is you know everybody's embracing artificial intelligence and machine learning and you know the the opportunities there are vast but there is always this cybersecurity headache like you know, can i can i trust that i can send my data to this organization over here so they can do some kind of cool machine learning stuff on it and send it back to me uh is that okay do i trust them with my data um so eagles has developed a technology that allows uh allows that third party to operate on your data while it's st- still encrypted so they don't get to see what your data is but you get to benefit from sort of their processing of it i guess and so again we we integrated our quantum origin software into that and it's part of a whole sort of quantum resistant approach they've taken to security so, so that's you know some of the things we're doing in the cyberspace and there does seem to be a real um i guess uptick of interest at the moment obviously continuum as a whole does many things beyond cyber security so yeah there's there's uh, announcements on a regular basis about our work with partners so we, we work with for example leading high performance computing centers and ai centers so places like riken in in japan uh, who who actually uh who have actually purchased one of our quantum computers for their own research or in the united states we work with uh, oak ridge national laboratory for example um but we see a lot of interest in the enterprise space as well so we're working with people like bmw or airbus or Equinor, JPMC, HSBC, all the acronyms. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of um, collaborations in flight as these organizations explore quantum generally and how it can shape their businesses. And as you said earlier in your answer there about Honeywell, over here in the UK, we automatically assume heating and radiators. And I think it'd be about three or four years ago, I had a guy from Honeywell Quantum Solutions on here. I think his name was Brian Nayan Huis or something like that. And I think he's since gone on to, to Quantanium himself. Do you know him? Have you bumped into him at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I know Brian. Yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the the team at Honeywell that had been working on quantum computers actually merged with the company that Ilias, who we were talking about at yeah. the start, founded. And actually, that is where Continuum came from. So we we were an organization born from two of the leading companies in quantum so one was a leader in quantum software the other was a leader in quantum hardware so yeah brian uh yeah stayed on board and he's he's still uh, with the company today oh wow fantastic small world and all that oh that's that's amazing and i'm curious i mean you've mentioned some pretty big names here what kind of feedbacks well what kind of feedback did you get from them did you did it blow their mind initially, or were they already well versed to know what it, what its capabilities were? What, what kind of feedback did you get from them? I mean, there has been a lot of interest and, and positive feedback about our quantum computers themselves. Um, yeah. So, one of the things we hear regularly is that because of the very high quality of those machines, um, you know, researchers in these large organisations can can achieve things and perform experiments on our machines that they. They haven't been able to do before so there's a lot of um positivity there around um, what is possible um and i think uh the other, th- the other thing i hear as well and i think the sort of the feedback we get from customers and the market as a whole is that we, we've really tried to lead on integrity scientific integrity and you know minimizing the hype that so often surrounds, you know, quantum computing as a whole, and also quantum cybersecurity. So we're very careful before, you know, before if we announce something, it is it is scientifically backed and it is credible. And I think that has developed a reputation for our organisation in the industry. Um, 
on the cyber side, I think we we have a lot of conversations where uh, you know people are not clear what the future looks like, and so you know some of our conversations are really around explaining this world and helping people understand what they need to do. But the positive feedback we get uh, on the cyber side is that people are surprised how easy it is to integrate and use our technology. You know, it's, it sounds horrifically complicated. Uh, you know that it's that there's a quantum computer involved somewhere in this solution, and when they discover then that actually it's a it's a piece of software that they can put onto a laptop, uh, or they can plug it into a Linux system, or put it into their IoT device, and it just works out the box. That that tends to tends to amaze people actually. Incredibly cool. And as someone right in the heart of the storm, so to speak here. What excites you um, about the potential of quantum computing and makes you almost maybe want to jump out of bed in the morning? What excites you about this? Well, I'm genuinely excited every day because, you know, because my background hasn't been in quantum, I never thought I would, uh, you know, deserve a place in this industry. So I, every day I'm pinching myself that this science is evolving around me and, and somehow I get to be a very small part of it. And it, it's it's really exciting. On the, on the cyber side, um, I'm excited by the groundswell of interest in the in the technologies. You know, I think um, three or four years ago, this this these sort of concepts were floating around. They were very nascent, and I think people saw them as science projects. Um, and month after month now, though, I see the interest in this topic growing. Um, you know, I see LinkedIn exploding with commentary on most quantum cryptography and quantum technology. And as I speak to organisations, they're more and more uh, familiar with this stuff. They're, you know, they're, they're asking intelligent questions. It's clear they've done their homework, and now they're really looking to do something about it. So on the cyber side, I think it's just about that rate of progress that I I, I think is very exciting. And and then we look further ahead. I think you know that quantum networks and the ability to send quantum information around. I think that's going to be game changing as as that begins to uh, mature. On the on the compute side, again, we're at this really we're at a tipping point now, where we're going to start seeing that quantum computers can do things that can't be done on a you know even the biggest classical supercomputers, and that you know we're at that moment now, and um, so in the, in the months and, and years ahead, we're going to really start to see these milestones being hit. Um, you know, as, as things like error correction, which is a very big topic in quantum computers you know how, how do you get these computers to keep doing their calculations and not be beset by a you know ever-growing accumulation of of errors um you know as strides are taken forward in 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 that direction as as the computers get bigger we're just going to see this series of milestones being knocked down over the next year 18 months and and so i'm really excited i'm not so involved in that myself but i'm going to have a you know front row passion to see to see you know these announcements coming out yeah, as you said, it is an incredibly exciting time. And just before you uh, hopped on to speak with me today in this podcast, I was reading about how MIT and IBM are finding cleverer AI ways around brute force math, which just blew my mind re- reading that article. And apologies that we have got to nearly 30 minutes and I've mentioned the AI word, but I, I've got to ask, what's next for Quantinium and what is your big focus? Anything you can share there? Oh, well, I think it's um, it's really around hitting these milestones that I'm talking about. Um, yeah. So, you know, we have teams working on improving the hardware. We've got teams, you know, making real advances in, in the error correction stuff that I was talking about. Um, and, you know, our hardware roadmap is designed around this idea of continuously upgrading our machines. So looking ahead over the next 12 months, we're going to be seeing those milestones being hit. We're going to see problems being solved for the first time that you just can't you know simulate on a classical computer because that's the crazy thing you know up until you know about now mm. whatever you did on a quantum computer you could you could effectively run it on a very powerful classical computer and simulate what the results should be we're about to leave that behind us now go into the unknown world where you know the quantum computers have gone beyond what can be done classically in, in some areas and uh, so i think our focus really is on our hardware roadmaps uh, and, and delivering upon our, our promises there. And in the cyber sector, which is obviously my, my little domain, um, it's it's really about just continuing the production rollout of this technology, building more integrations into systems, and just really trying to keep up 
with the the demand and interest in this in this technology. I think that's a very powerful moment to end on. But before I do let you go, a big thank you for sharing your insights today. But I'm going to ask you to leave one more final gift to everyone listening, and that is a song that means something to you that we can add to our Spotify playlist or a book to the Amazon wish list. But all I'm going to ask is, what would you like to leave everyone listening with and why? I think uh, I think I'd probably go down the book route because I'm a, yeah. quite a big reader. And if I think back at the book that probably had the biggest impact on me when I read it, uh, it's, a, it's a book called The 4-Hour Work Week. It was written by uh, sort of a self-experimenter called uh, Tim Ferriss. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, I've never achieved a four hour work week, just to be clear, but I read it at the start of my career. And I think it really shaped how I approach work and how I try and stay on top of a lot of things going on. And certainly in this job over the last three years, I've needed, you know, those tricks more than ever. So I think that's, uh, I don't know how, you know, <laughs> whether it stands the test of time, but when I read it back in 2007, it was, uh, really, really influenced me. So I think that would be my, my answer. Yeah, it's a cracking book. Uh, We'll add that straight to the Amazon wish list. And for anyone listening, just want to find out more information about you, about quantum technology, about the work that you're doing, where would you like to point everyone listening? Uh, Well, two places. I think um, we publish everything we're doing as an organization at uh, continuum.com. So that would be uh, one place to to look. Uh, If you're particularly interested in in the cybersecurity side of things, you can find me on LinkedIn and I, I post pretty regularly about the industry and what was going on. Um, so that would be another place to to look. Fantastic. Well, I'll have those links so people can find you nice and easily. As we said at the very outset of this podcast, Quantinium is the largest full-stack quantum computing company. And just saying those words at the beginning of the podcast might have intimidated a few people listening, but I just love how we've been able to demystify this technology, talk about the real-world value, business problems it will solve, etc., and the problems around cybersecurity. Absolutely incredible what you're doing here, but just thank you for putting it in a language everyone can understand. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me, Neil. For me, Duncan's expertise has illuminated the dual nature of quantum computing and cybersecurity, and he highlighted both the challenges and the incredible opportunities that it presents for strengthening our digital defences. And with real-world applications already underway and a vision for the next decade that promises even more groundbreaking advancements, it's clear The quantum era is already here and it's unfolding before our very eyes. So as we continue to navigate these uncharted digital waters, one thing remains certain. The fusion of quantum computing and cybersecurity will be a key driver of innovation, offering new ways to protect and enhance our digital world. So big thank you to Duncan for sharing his profound knowledge and the vision for Quantinium with us today. But over to you. The future is quantum and the possibilities are fast as the universe itself. But what are your thoughts on the potential of quantum computing, especially in cybersecurity? But if there are any other areas that uh, you're in the heart of, I'd love to hear from you too. So please email me now, techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. But that's it for today. So until next time, stay curious, stay informed, keep looking towards the future. See you tomorrow.